Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio. So in this week's edition of Master Class, The Exquisite Corpse Layout Part 2, we are working on three backgrounds. Um, and then of course this was last week's background. So I am still working with napkin transparencies, spray inks, um, I am working with shimmer sprays, and then on this page, which I will probably do more of, I am working with the Lumiere. Um, uh, these are liquid acrylics, so they are very, very liquid. Um, they're fun to work with, and look at the amazing, um, I'm trying to get it without the glare on there. It really gives some beautiful, gorgeous detail. I mean, wow. I'll put a link for that in the Amazon links. Um, the um, Distress Spray Stains are already down in the Amazon links. And I believe that some of the, um, the, the Shimmer Sprays are Dilutions and then the Tim Holtz Dist Distress Spray Stains. They're really awesome to use. Um, but if you don't have those, you don't have to go buy them. Um, you know, use something, you could use watercolor, just watch out how, how saturated you get it. Um, you know, use your imagination. You can use gelatos, you could use uh, Distress Crayons. The spray stains go a little bit further, so that's kind of why I like them. And they also leave things pretty transparent when they're done. Um, so that's why I am using them. Uh, Patreons, here's what we're doing for your video. Uh, we are making some more cattails and we finished up with this page, which is Fields of Summer. Um, the spider web is sitting in there amazingly now. You don't see it quite as vividly, but it does feel really, really, really a lot like a spider web. Um, totally stoked about how that has turned out. So if you want to see how to make the cattails and the spider web, that is Patreon exclusive content. Um, also this week, uh, we are working on, of course, if these walls could talk. So Patreons received the templates for the ancestors. And also this is going to be Patreons exclusive, creating your first altered book, uh, video. This will probably be two or three parts, uh, coming up this next week. So, I do have to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you so very much for your support. Uh, it is absolutely 100% necessary, and if you are able to afford it, I would greatly appreciate your support. Uh, your pledge does make a difference. I have a $10 tier and a $25 tier. Um, you know, YouTube does not pay me to do all of these videos. Um, you know, I, it's... Uh, <laughs> Your support would be greatly appreciated, we'll just say that. And to my amazing Patreons, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, I do really appreciate it. Uh, the differences between the $10 tier and the $25 tier is in the $25 tier, you do get to have a conversation with me every single month. Um, it's a 30 minute conversation where we talk about art and whatever is going on in your life. And I love getting to know you. Anyways, um, I guess that's all for now. Uh, Thanks so much everybody for being here. I hope you enjoyed the videos. I'll probably be fast forwarding you through quite a bit of it. It is the same process on each one. I glue down the napkins. I use the Distress Spray Stains, the Delusion Sprays. I use the Lumieres on the last one and I will be using those going forward. Um, and uh, all of the links for everything are down in the uh, comments for Amazon. And if you could use those, that would be very, very helpful. Okay, that's it. We'll chat soon. Bye.
Alrighty, here is the blue page. Um, trying to see about his whole lot of glare on these. And the Mod Podge does kind of give it a little bit of that shiny background, even though it's the matte Mod Podge. But that particular napkin, what a great pattern it left. Love, love, love that. And then the red and the blue sparkles are really just stunning. I did come through and put in, so this has the London blue sparkles, uh, delusions, and then this is the uh, Campo, a teal, it's a teal. I don't know what it says because it's really hard to read the word. Um, and then the, the red color. So this just turned out gorgeous. I love it. I love it. And I hope you guys do too. Um, you know, this, the napkin and spray inks, really beautiful. This one had some more of the distressed crayons, which, um, I really do love how this one turned out also. They have great texture to them. It's not a huge amount of texture, but it's really a vintage texture. So, or, you know, kind of, it is kind of vintage and wrinkled and, uh, I've been reading about, uh, historic places and so it reminded me of um, vintage wallpaper which is kind of what I was doing on um, my uh, creating your first altered book too so all working together all right guys have a great day Okay, so I did start up this page without you guys um, because it's a lot to show you and it's kind of the same technique, but uh, I'm just gluing these birds on. This one's going to have a real vintage feel to it, so I thought I would um, go with kind of a browner background for it. Oh, thank goodness I've got new Mod Podge coming. It's all glumpity still usable but I don't like glumpity glumps uh, just trying to rotate this little bird guy uh, let's see so that it doesn't feel like it's the same bird over and over that one's quite cute just like that so as you can see with the different um, napkins you really get you get great texture for one But you can definitely build a theme around different napkins. And that's cool for me. Glumpity glumps. Be careful on the wet napkins, of course. Uh, they do tear off quite easily. They are fragile. Try to work from the outside or the inside and push to the out. You know, the, the transparencies really can add so much to an art a piece of artwork. I think I need one more bird. I'm gonna get another bird here and um, 
some more flowers in here. And then I'm also just um, using the, the scraps of the napkins. to fill in these other spots. All right, I'll be right back. Oops, I just put down that one without you guys being here. I thought I had to turn the video on and that actually happens. <laughs> oh, I stop it because then editing it is easier but then I forget to turn it back on and then I miss pieces and parts so you guys missed uh, some of this page being done um, I love how this turned out so this one is well on its way to becoming just as amazing um, I've got seven little birds I love these little flowers uh, we'll see how much is left of it though after uh, I start to do the spray technique on it so um, I am going to, am I going to tear these off first? I kind of like seeing what's going to happen. You know, visually it helps me to have these edges torn down. And we're going to try some spiced marmalade in there. So let's, uh, let's start with kind of the orangey color, the spiced marmalade. If you don't press down all the way, you kind of get this, the more squirty, the more dots. And I'm really liking that kind of dotty look. Um, I've been doing it quite a bit lately. Uh, I think it's kind of an influence from the watercolors, uh, but I really do enjoy that. All right, this is the mustard seed. So what do we have here for colors? So we have kind of this green this purple. Oh, that's very, very yellow. Let's take that yellow down with a little bit of uh, uh, fired brick on the edges. Let's pull in our paintbrush here. Dry. You want this dry? Oh, I'm getting over here onto this guy, which is fine. Oh, actually, I kind of like that orange added to that. Just kind of moving around the color a little bit here. Now these are still wet, so I want to be very careful about how hard I press down on it. Very light brush. And uh, let's see, I think a little bit of this, oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that seedless preserves would have a shaker in it. Ooh. So when you add purple to orange or yellow, you're going to make it brown, which I'm looking for a browner tone here. Um, the yellow is a bit too yellow. I want this to feel very antique. I like it. I like what it's doing, so I'm going for it. See, that's the brown that you get when you mix purple and yellow and orange. It's a very beautiful color. And I dig that. We're going to add some metallic to it because we have been adding our metallics to these guys. I think that it adds um, a lot of dimension to it. So we're going to do that again. I don't even know if I want to add in the walnut stain. It might darken it too much. Um, come on. But I think, I think, I think it'll be okay. I don't want it to be brown. I want to make sure that I'm keeping my colors um, rich and pure, but not bonking you over the head. 
if I want to continue to see the background it's somewhat and we will be doing more over the top of these this is just the beginning now those I like keeping that maybe it's just a piece of uh, paper towel here napkin actually I like that that's good we can add actually a little bit more of that just do a little bit at a time see how you like it and come back and do more if you want more it's kind of taking down that that intense color and this is really turning out very cool here too Okay, uh, let's get some shimmery stuff in here. Now this, I don't know how much I love this glimmer mist. Um, I got this at Tuesday morning, so it was cheap. Um, it's Add a Fine Glimmer. And this color is water-based sharp orange. It'd be perfect for this. So it does add just a touch of shimmer, which we're wanting to do. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't have a whole lot to it though. Oh, that's really pretty what's happening there though So let's come back in with our <clears throat> Tangerine dream and our sunshine yellow And uh, Oh, yes And as you guys know, like I just said, I've been liking doing this kind of um, splatter painting. I, I love the effects that it gives. So if I like something, I continue to kind of incorporate it into my work. I don't want it all to feel the same, but then again, I am creating my own style by doing it. So if you don't like this, create your own style. If you do like it, then by all means. You know, I'm showing you how to do it so that you can replicate it or, you know, do it in your own work. That's why I'm here. Just to give you ideas. That's beautiful. Now, the only thing that I, since these are water-based, I probably will want to set this somehow. Uh, the other ones, I've put a layer of Mod Podge over the top, so that would probably be good to do here as well. Now, we have definitely lost the little birds in the background, uh, but it does create a really cool layer. And mixed media is all about the layers, right? And you can kind of see them back there. We can see if we can pull them out a little bit more here. Let's take a finer brush. Um, something with a little bit of bristle to it. Let's see if we can pull the little birdies back out. Probably not too much. Oh, we got it back a little bit for sure. Okay, that worked. Don't scrub, just run it over the top. If you scrub too hard, you're gonna pull up the napkin. This is very delicate at this point in time, so we don't want to damage our surface. And we're almost doing a little bit of watercolor on the birds themselves here. Is that really covered up?
especially that one. It's not dry, so they fragile. I don't know if this is even remotely necessary. You know, I don't know how much of it you'll end up seeing at the end. Probably none of it, actually. Now, you can always uh, protect your uh, base layer that's under there if you wanted to kind of mask it over or any of those things. You can do that. I just brought them back a little bit just because I wanted to see them a little bit more. If you look in here, you can see all of those different beautiful background papers that we put in there. And I love that gold. I do love that gold shimmer. We're going to put a little bit more in because I just, I love it. Where is it? Where is it? Here's the orange. I want the gold. looking here to see if I can find it but it's it's cool to have kind of an orange page too you know? and we'll be adding and adding and adding to these layers this is just the beginning guys this is just the beginning <laughs> it's gonna be so cool uh, the truth is I don't know what it's gonna look like I'm still working through my process, so um, until I jump into it, I don't know where it's going to go. All right, so this page is drying very nicely. We're going to go through and uh, put our layer of Mod Podge on here. And the main reason why I put the Mod Podge on is to protect it, um, to set the water-based inks. Um, and then it also does give a really nice um, finish to the piece. So I want to make sure that all my pages are glued down here. Of course, as we know, when we're doing this Mod Podge, that we do it very lightly. We're doing crisscrosses, um, not trying to drag that paint, because all of this will move. So you have to dry brush it. Try not to get too thick on there. That might be a little bit too thick. The thicker you get, the less it dries. Or it kind of it can dry cloudy, which we do not want cloudy. We want this gorgeous color to shine through. You could also do a layer of varnish. You could also do a layer of uh, clear gesso. Uh, clear gesso. I don't know if that would be the right thing to use or not. It might be um, because we're still going to do more techniques over it. If it's your final technique, then you know use varnish. Um, uh, but it is going to move your paint. It is going to change the properties of things. So do it very lightly. And it, it will set everything that's underneath of it. So make sure it looks the way you want it to look before you do it. And another nice thing about using Mod Podge in this is that, you know, it's a perfect base to continue to work over the top. So, but as you can see, it is moving that sparkle splatters, which is good. Uh, oops, I just put that in water instead of Mod Podge. Not good. Okay. Gorgeous.
Good thing my coffee's not up there. I'm sure I'd be dunking it in there too. Huh, Cindy? <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Here's the purple again. Why? I'm not sure. Just wanted a little, little bit more interest. Uh, that is the seedless preserves. Wow, wow, wow. I want each page to feel different and individual. So, okay. We'll chat soon. Bye.